Acts chapter 2. This was the day of Pentecost. And we've been talking about a threefold chord. And there are three elements here that are very core, they are very central, they are very fundamental here. Three. This was a major one because this was the beginning of the church. And he says the threefold chord cannot be broken. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. The gates of hell will not be able to break it. So he would have some threefold foundation, foundational stuff in here that the enemy will not be able to tamper with, will not be able to break. And you look at these three elements when they are in our life lives we are functioning by them they are functioning in our lives uh, these three elements here we will be full we will be complete and we will set up uh, that kind of fortress that the Lord intended for us uh, to represent uh, the strength and the resilience of his church the authority and the power of his church he said first there was a sound well when they came together they were in one accord and now God was doing something in a three-dimensional form three chords coming together and God when he wants to move in your life and fill your life whatever the need is whatever the desire is he wants to fulfill your need he wants to fulfill your desires he wants to fulfill whatever situation they may be or whatever void they may be he want to fill the void there are three stages that he will move and three major factors that he will bring your way. The first one is a sound. The sound is the word. That's the beginning thing. And the Bible tells us clearly right there in John, in the beginning was the word. It starts with the word. In the beginning was the word. In Genesis, you see, it started with the word. In the beginning, God said, let there be be light and there was a light in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God the word was made flesh and dwelt among us so you have the word all through but it starts with the beginning the beginning is the word when he hear the sound from heaven that's why you hear when Peter came out and, and they said you are drunk look at these men he said hey this is the word in manifestation here this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. It, start, it didn't start here in the, uh, in the upper room. It started when the prophet Joel spoke something. He said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He starts with a word in your life. When we are born again, it's the word that starts with you are born again by the incorruptible seed of God. The word of the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every time Jesus came on the scene to do a miracle, he gave them a word. The Bible said his word is life to them that find it and is hell to all their flesh. He get on the scene with Lazarus and he started to speak. And he said, where have you laid him? Martha said, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. She said, I know he will rise on the resurrection on the last day. He straightened that out by letting them know he was the resurrection and the life. They started to question and make certain statements that were contrary to the word. He put them in line with the word and he said, no, said I not unto you. If thou can believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. They hesitated and he said, roll the stone away. I'm giving you some word here because I'm going to bring a miracle and if you could only follow the word, you will only follow the sound. I'm giving you a sound not from earth. They were talking all kind of earthly sound that they heard about. What they heard, the scribes said, the Pharisees said, some preachers said, somebody said, what they're thinking about. Some people say, what they get, the uh, zodiac sign talk about, the word that they get from Hollywood, the word they get from Wall Street, from Central Bank, from some politician. But Jesus said, I am telling you, if thou canst believe, you shall see the glory of God. He said, Madam, I say, roll the stone away. She said, Lord, by this time he's thinking. That is what we know. That is what we hear. This man inside there for four days, what we know and what we have heard about everybody who is in the grave four days, they're thinking by now. He said, hear my word, man. Forget about the tradition. Forget about what you're accustomed to. Forget about the routine. Forget about what, the, what you experience. I am giving you my word. I say, roll the stone away. But man, 
man, uh, if we roll the stone away, they're going to charge us. The health people will come uh, and charge us for breaking the health laws uh, because we're going to pollute the entire place. Uh, hey, hear this. Uh, I am boss here. I give you the instruction here. My word is above every word. My name is above every name. My authority is above every authority. I am the boss here. And if I say roll it, if I say roll it, if I say roll it, get ready to roll it, get ready to roll it, get ready to move it, get ready to get it out of the way because it starts with a word and the obedience of a word and the miracle power is in the word. I bring my word here to heal you. I bring my word here to deliver you. My word is quicker and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It will heal the sick. It will raise the dead. Hear the sound. This sound is from heaven. I just came from heaven, Martha. My father prepared me a body and I come down here just now I go be raised from the dead myself and I just giving you a little taste of what is to come the resurrection and the life this is no earthly thing this is heavenly thing this is no natural thing this is supernatural thing this is super superior to the natural roll 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 the thing away because I'm getting ready to roll some heads in hell. I'm getting ready to roll Lazarus to resurrection. I'm getting ready to roll you into a miracle like you have never seen before. Somebody give him a roll in one. He said, Martha, if you can believe, I know you know about his thinking stuff. You know about what happened to everybody else. But matter, this is a sound from heaven. You know it all your life. It has never been different. But this is a special visitation. And I've given you a sound from heaven. This is a supernatural one. Like it never happened before. A sound. And if we could only listen to that sound, that word from heaven you are absolutely complete you are absolutely sound you are absolutely whole you see those people here coming and we talk to them and prophesy into their lives sat down one lady i ministered her here just at the end of the prayer line somebody had done something some iniquity and i spoke to that thing and knocked it out of her life one time and it has been there for years that lady thanked me so much she said, son, I thank you. God will bless you. She hold my hand. Uh, you know, she's from Pfizer band. She was so thankful. She said, oh, my God. Over and over. She started talking like I couldn't leave there with her. And there were a couple other people here waiting for me. And I even told her, I said, listen, I will bring you. And I'll put you on the pulpit. And I'll let you testify like this. And just shake up this whole place. She is somewhere 80-something, 90 or somewhere there. But she speaks fluently. She remembers it. She's clear in her mind. And listen, absolute breakthrough deliverance in one. Wednesday night, I spoke to another one who had all kinds of evil things coming out of the body. Real ugly things in the body. And some of them dropping out of the body. Horrible, scary things. And they told me, we're going to wait for you no matter how long we have to wait. But we will wait for you tonight just a little five minutes. And when I went there, one of the worst demonic attacks that you could ever see. And they said, Pastor, tell us. I told them exactly what was going on. The person behind it. What was happening. What would happen in three months or two months time or so. And the entire scenario. And canceled and destroyed everything there. They heard all the sound from heaven hell but when a sound from heaven they are left here that night rejoicing we joking the husband and the woman walk outside there with absolute joy and freedom the entire thing absolutely broke entirely broken by a sound from heaven mashing up them devils 
mashing up every devil in the world. I don't care what it is. You just hear from heaven. The sound from heaven is always a good one. It's always a Holy Ghost one. It's always a filling and a fulfilling one. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you that your joy will be full. When he's finished, give you that word. Your joy will be full. And that full joy means full strength because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Strength. This guy on Friday last week came back again from Tortuga. And the, this, uh, whoever spoke this word on his life, and he was dying himself and his son, came here the Wednesday and brought the paper to me and, uh, and showed me what they said. He trembling, the son so uh, traumatized and weak and all that, he could not come. They left him home because they say he will die and the rest of the family. And they absolutely traumatized, entirely traumatized. And they brought the paper here with all the thing written on it. And they said, this person speaks and he does not miss. So that's why they were so scared. And give them in writing because they found that it was so sure. Keep it in writing. And I took that thing and the anger, the righteous anger of God come upon me and I could hear the sound from heaven. I could hear the sound from heaven saying mash it up I could hear the sound from heaven saying destroy it I could hear the sound from heaven saying trample it under your feet and I just moved right here the entire crowd of people and I took it right here and I said watch what we're going to do and I walk him over walk him over tread upon serpents tread upon scorpions tread upon all the powers of the enemy Next day, the man came back, and up to Friday night, he was here again with his family saying thanks. Everybody together, and that was about four or five months ago, everybody, it all in one, everything canceled and removed. In fact, I called the initials on the son name before he told me. I said, is the son so-and-so-and-so? -and -so? Call out his name. He watched your wife, watch your his wife. He stunned, she started to cry. They said, yes, pastor. I said, right, that's the boy I'm seeing now. I describe him and the condition he was in. They said, that's how he is, something like that, how he was uh, at home at the time. And we just dismantled the entire thing. A sound from heaven makes the difference. Mark, Dr. Mark Ragunan, who comes here, 18 years ago, he's a little boy, a secondary school student. Now he's a doctor, as we know. And um, he sat sitting before his television set in point 14, frustrated. Every day he has to go to the hospital at least twice a day with, his, with asthma, nebulizer stuff. At least twice a day. He had to walk around all over with it. And then it got worse when the, the, the thing increased. He could, he could hardly go to school. Frustration. And uh, the, the parents and the desperate. He sat down before the television set this Sunday morning looking for whatever would come up. And when I get on television... Ministered, and when I was finished, I said, you young man, you are suffering with so-and-so. And I described his condition, spoke into his life, and told him exactly, you are suffering with this. You have this medical condition. You have to end up in the hospital such and such a time. He was so, he never did this before, but he left his parents, left everybody. They were no believers. But he, so he left everybody, they didn't want to come with him. And he traveled all the way, taxied all the way up to Chase Village, taking four cars. He came in here, he was half drenched. He got wet, sat down somewhere in the church. I called the situation out again, among other things for other people. And I, he came up, just a, a little introductory something. He came up and stood before me here. And uh, when I stood before me at the, at the pulpit, I'd read his life like a book. You heard him say it on TV numerous times. In his wedding, a bigger crowd than this in his wedding. And you call dignitary, call politicians, call ministers of government, call ex-ministers of government, call all kinds of things. Everybody was there. And he, and he stood up there with boldness, shared his entire testimony of what happened from the morning he got home. That in most of his speech, when they call him the groom's reply, he said, thank you to my his wife and father. And some of his about two minutes is so long. And the entire thing was testimony. People's eyes were filled with tears. People came to me after you wouldn't believe and say, my God, this is really God. And one woman came, she said, this, I'm now convinced that God is real. What happens at your church is real. This is it. I know what was going on with Mark. I know what it is going on with him now. And it's amazing. The whole place transformed. When the reality of the thing, the awesome thing in the wedding, it's like a church. He himself, 
with people crying all over. He himself broke down in tears on the camera. You saw it on television many times when we run it. He broke down in tears in front of everybody. I had to go and embrace him because the power was so strong in that place. In a wedding, in a wedding in a secular environment, the reception I'm talking about. And what happened? He got the sound from the medical science. He got sound from everybody else who would give advice with the asthma condition and who would say what and what. And all of them would have meant well and done their best, I'm sure. But when it came to a sound from heaven, that was going to bring a heaven on earth. That was going to bring a heaven on earth. A heaven on earth experience. Uh, Jesus on the outside, working on the inside, on the inside, working on the outside. A direct sound from heaven. But when there is a sound from heaven, there is a way that may seem right. But the sound from heaven, <laughs> the sound from heaven, the sound from heaven puts it right. Puts it right. Because this world is a world of massive deception. The love of money is the root of all evil. And people will pack all kinds of things into your life. Paint all kinds of picture on it. Tell you it's the best thing in the world as long as they could get the money out of you. But God will bypass all of that. And he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sin. So no matter what it is, he will guide you and he will lead you. What you need is not a sound from an ad on TV. What you need is not a sound from some kind of video on YouTube. Or a sound from somebody who put something on the internet. Or even a sound from so-called ex experts. You need a sound from heaven. Because we are citizens of heaven. And God directs you 100%. And transforms your life. Brother Archie, he stood before me one day in one of the services. And he said, Pastor, my brother died. And it seems as though everything came on me. And I am dying. Some of the same symptoms on me. His body shutting down. His head is in problems. His organs. He went to the doctor. He is scared. His food not digesting properly. Blood circulation problem. Heart shutting down on him. His complexion changed. And he is moving very slow. Slow. About, that must be about six months ago, seven months ago. I watched him. I said, do you do this? Do you do that? He said, yes, to some, no to some. I said, I want to give you one advice. One advice. And you can ask these people if you feel it's some commercial thing that I'm on. I said, one advice. There is something called wonder cleanse. Just take that, your problem solved. Ask him. Ask him. Everything cleared immediately. A sound from heaven. Paul told Timothy, he said, I wouldn't even lay hands on you. Just drink a, a little wine for the stomach's sake. And your often infirmities. He was a pastor and sick every day. Naaman came. And he heard about the water of far, far, and the water of this, and the water of that. And when Elisha told him, go dip in Jordan water, he said, we have the best water here. What you telling me about that? I have the best. He turned back and he said, we're going for the best home. His servant said, hey, the prophet is the best boy. Is a sound from heaven. He turned back, went in Jordan, and seven dips, and he was healed completely. Because a sound from heaven is what you listen to. It's not the nice thing in your house, your pool, or your nice nursing home, or whatever it may be. A sound from heaven heaven the heavenly advice it's God at work and he has your best interest at heart today I want to tell you whatever your situation we have done this with people in education we have done it with families we have surprised them things they never thought was the right thing we have done it with people in legal matters you hear us testify about that over and over legal situation legal matters I remember talking to dr toby the legal advisor to two prime ministers legal advisor roman ambassadors signing documents making deals for the uh, for the government all over the world he was not ambassador to china or america he was roving amb the ambassador to every country and a lawyer advised a lawyer of lawyers. And I sat down and I said, don't go this way. Go that way. 17 charges before the court, actually 18. All criminal charges. They wanted to put him in prison for the rest of his life because of political situations and so on. And, and put him at the highest powers against him. And I said, let's go with this one. Talk with that one. And I went with him by a couple of lawyers. I said, yes, this is the one. 
that is the one. He went before the court. He called me one night and I told him about some witnesses would be coming, what the clothes they would be wearing, and what was in the drawer of one of the, the legal persons, the documents and so on. And when the person came, I said they would be wearing this outfit, outfitted in such and sort, talk to certain people, talk to Israel Khan, the lead counsel, and he put it to the guy. When he started to talk to the guy, come dress the same way like I said and whatever, the fellow said, Israel Khan said, I put it to you, you are lying. He said, yes, sir. I put it to you, you are not talking the truth. He said, yes, sir. I put to you, it's nothing like that. He says, yes, sir. Justice Kenny Fassad said, Mr. So-and-so, do you expect me to put this to a jury? He said, no, sir. He said, Mr. Toby, walk. You are free from all 18 charges right there in a matter of minutes. All free. They had a big write-up about me all over the papers everywhere. Because a sound from heaven. He said, Pastor, whatever you tell me. And there were certain situations that went in a certain direction. And then I, well, well, he had gone in another direction completely already and done everything almost messed up, just one step away from the prison. And we turned in, he said, as a lawyer, an experienced lawyer, an international lawyer, an English trained, an English served lawyer, I will not follow what you're telling me. But because it comes from the Holy Ghost, I will listen. One shot, one hearing, everything out. A sound from heaven.